Imagine it's a morning of a day in 2035. You open your eyes to a quiet morning. No alarm, no rush to get to work because the AGI robots and computers are doing all the major jobs. Every month, you get some cash in your bank account, and that is UBI. Want to master the guitar? Dive into a new book? Your time is yours to fill. You do what you like and spend your day like you want. Well, this isn't a daydream. This is what the world will look like in the future. Our life after we achieve AGI and UBI. Do you know why I specifically mentioned the year 2035? Well, according to OpenAI's CEO, Sam Altman, by the end of this decade, we will have machines capable of performing tasks just like humans. I don't know, I expect that like by the end of this decade, we have systems that create really significant economic value. Altman has also frequently discussed universal basic income. This suggests that if not by 2030, then by around 2035, we might achieve AGI and see governments implementing UBI. Governments are already starting to recognize the potential impact of AI. For instance, in Europe, there's the AI Act, designed to ensure AI develops responsibly. Similarly, in the US, the government has allocated about $3 billion for AI projects, demonstrating a serious commitment to this technology. With AGI managing everything from everyday tasks to complex problem solving, we'll have more time to pursue our passions and invest in relationships. Now, some might worry that people could become lazy if they receive money without working. While that concern is valid, experiments with UBI in countries like Finland and Canada have shown promising results. Participants reported better health, reduced stress, and even improved job opportunities. In my opinion, the impact of UBI will vary from person to person, but it will likely have a significant effect on the younger generation. Another concern, as mentioned by the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, is the potential disparity in UBI amounts, with some receiving more than others. Others. In a recent interview, Jeffrey Hinton said, Yes, yeah, so I'm very worried about AI taking over lots of mundane jobs, and that should be a good thing. It's going to lead to a big increase in productivity, which leads to a big increase in wealth. And if that wealth was equally distributed, that would be great, but it's not going to be. Governments will play a crucial role in all of this. People usually require three necessary things for their living food, shelter, and clothing. If UBI covers these three essentials, people will be tension-free and able to live their lives doing things they love. In this scenario, they would work for extra money to travel, invest, pursue hobbies, support their families, and contribute to their communities. In a future where AGI and UBI both exist, hospitals will benefit from AGI systems helping with accurate diagnoses and smooth operations. AGI will make hospital management more efficient and assist in complete complex medical procedures. In the future, robots might cook our meals, clean our homes, and do other chores. Instead of doing these tasks ourselves, we might pay to spend a day learning from a chef or a carpenter. And with UBI, teachers can also focus on improving learning experiences without worrying about money, creating a better environment worldwide. But yes, as Jeffrey Hinton points out, these benefits can only come to life if everyone gets equal UBI in the future. Achieving this is incredibly challenging given today's economic and political landscape. Lots of famous people are talking about UBI in the post-AGI world, like our Mars man, Elon Musk, OpenAI's CEO, Sam Altman, Jeffrey Hinton, and Imad Mushtaq, etc. Interestingly, the CEO of OpenAI, who supports UBI, recently said in a podcast interview that he thinks UBC, Universal Basic Compute, might be even better than UBI. UBC means people would get basic computing resources instead of just money. He explained, I wonder if the future looks something like more like universal basic compute than universal basic income. And everybody gets like a slice of GPT-7's compute and they can use it, they can resell it, they can donate it to somebody to use for cancer research. But but what you get is not dollars, but this like productivity slice. Yeah, you own like part of the productivity. If you want to know how and why he believes this, watch the video in the card. Well, what do you think? Write your thoughts in the comments and check out these videos on your screen.